I'm Jason Rankin, and welcome to the Grass Check Podcast, brought to you by AgriSearch and Daphne. We are bringing you the latest information, insights, and opinion to improve grazing management on your farm. This week, we are joined by Kat Houston from AFBE to discuss the latest information from the Grass Check Plots and Farms, Stephen Flanagan from Capri, Francis Lively from AFBE, and Roger Bell, a Grass Check Sheep Farmer who farms near Kells. Thank you for joining us. Kat, the Met Office has just announced that May was the sunniest month on record and that we had just 42% of normal rainfall for the month. What effect is the continued dry weather having on growth this week? Yes, so it's certainly been a great few weeks for sunbathing, but a bit less for growing grass, although it's looking a bit more damp outside this morning, which is nice. This week we've seen the growth rates fall quite a bit on our plots and across the eastern part of the province as well. Um, We actually saw growth rates rise slightly on farms in Tyrone and Fermanagh and Derry. There wasn't much change in Antrim, but down in Armagh, they've fallen about 15 kilograms um, dry matter per hectare per day. And that's where this drought has really started to bite. So on the farms in these counties, we're seeing average growth of just 38 to 40 kilograms and 53 kilograms between our plots at Hillsmere and Greenmount this week, when we'd normally be seeing figures around about 90. So what growth are you forecasting for the coming two weeks? Last week was another week with almost no rainfall. And as you said, we've had less than half what we'd typically be getting in May. So we're really looking for some substantial rain in the weather forecast to address the soil moisture deficit that we've got at the moment. Um, there is some rain, but it's been quite changeable with where it's going to fall and the volumes expected. They're not really that much at the moment. So considering how dry the soils are, we're expecting to see a fall in growth over the next two weeks on the grass check plots. The current forecast is uh, 50 kilograms to a matter per hectare sort of this week to next Monday, and then 27.7 on the 14-day forecast. But I think it's important to note that these are three-week average growth rates from the plots. So the impact of the last few dry weeks is still going to be feeding through into our next set of cuts as well. If we do get a little bit more rain, hopefully we're going to see growth pick up again quickly and we might not see quite such a strong decline. So we'll we'll just have to wait and see what what changes with the weather forecast. Grass quality started to dip last week. Has it stabilised or has the decline continued? So we've actually seen grass ME values pick up a little bit again this week. So from all of the grass check samples that we had in, the average was 11.8 megajoules per kilogram on the dry matter basis. But where we've sort of risen slightly on average, we've had a much bigger spread of values than we normally get. So they were coming in from 12.2 down to 11.3. And I think that's probably reflective of where we've got samples from swords that are really starting to show some drought stress. So it has a very high dry matter values coming in, some of them were over 25%, and it's actually these samples that are showing the highest ME values this week. Obviously, with all the sunshine we've had, there's been no limit, certainly there, with the light levels on the sugar production via photosynthesis. We know that drought stress raises plant sugar contents in grass samples, sort of in general. And because these plants, they're not able to use the nitrogen that's available, they're not able to take that sugar and convert it into growth and new new leaf tissue because of the stress they're under at the moment and because of the growth restriction with the soil moisture deficit. We're not seeing um, growth the way we normally would and it's just leaving those very high sugar concentrations in the grass samples and that's what's driving up their ME figures in those samples. I think in the last stress samples, that's where we are starting to see decline in quality after sorts of gone to seed and sort of the typical seasonal dip that we do see after heading and we're seeing swords become a little bit more stemmy as well and that's something that we're probably going to see in those sort of drought stress samples in the next week or two as well with more stem coming through and less leaf as a result. What aspects of grassland management should farmers be focusing on this week? So it's interesting this week I think it really depends on what your own wedge is looking at looking like to be honest. So if you're over in the west and you're sitting quite comfortably, be watching that weather forecast 
I'm probably hoping to get some fertilizer out onto the swords ahead of the rain that's coming in. So yields are, are down quite a bit on average in general this year. So we really want to try and boost growth wherever we can. So if you've already taken silage off, you want to try and boost those regrowths. Um, just make sure that you're leaving the five to seven day window between applying slurry and then adding fertilizers so that you don't get any interaction occurring there and you don't get any of the associated um, losses with mixing the, the two fertilizers. This might be something to watch in the east as well. If we are getting rain coming in, but I'd be quite wary of getting out too soon with a spreader in sort of down in our mar and on any of the drier farms because with the soil so dry, we're going to need to have several millimetres of rain before I think you're going to see any particular benefit of adding that fertiliser. So there's probably still going to be nitrogen sat in the soil that hasn't been utilised from sort of the last time it was applied. And really, we just we want to see that rainfall coming in and soil conditions improve a bit before you get out of the spreader. And again, if you're looking at your wedge and you've, you're really looking at a deficit, and particularly sort of if you're not expecting to see much of the rain over the next few days, I'd still be looking at anywhere that you can cut down that grass demand if you can, whether that be selling off some more stock or delaying your second cuts to bring silage ground back into grazing, feeding silage alongside grass, or even if you've managed to take some big bales, you can be feeding these out. If you've got silage that's growing for second cut and it's it's fit to be bailed, you might even want to take those bales if you get a window and that'll give you an easier option for feeding in the paddock if you have to. I'm joined now by Stephen Flanagan from Caffrey, Francis Lively from Athby and Roger Bell, a grass check sheep farmer from Kells. Starting with you, Francis, what can beef farmers expect to get from grass at the moment? Jason, just in terms of beef and sheep, our grass quality remains high for this time of the year. Our dry matters are, with this current dry spell, our dry matters are very high, a couple of percent higher than would normally be. Energy and protein are remaining high as well, albeit farms that we are measuring these on are obviously putting good rotational grazing systems in place and it is good quality grass being utilised. If, on the other hand, on farms that this time of the year grass quality would tend to decline, and certainly if any farm has not been able to graze swords down tight and grass quality could be lower than what we're currently seeing, if there's a lot of dead material and stem at the, at the bottom of the sward, the uh, livestock, should it be sheep, cattle or even dairy cows are grazing, then the quality would obviously be lower than what we're seeing here. At the moment, in terms of driving performance, we're predicting growing cattle should, if they've got an adequate supply of grass, could be gaining over a kilo of live at gain at present. But that's largely determined by the quality of grass and the availability of grass at present. Grass is starting to get tight on a lot of farms and where grass is getting tight uh, and cattle are being held back, you will obviously not get that level of performance. It re really depends from farm to farm what the situation is like in terms of grass supply availability. What measures could be taken to avoid drop in animal performance? Especially animal performance is drove by the intake and the quality of that intake. So as I said earlier, the, the quality remains high and assuming the quality is high across farms, uh, if quantity isn't an uh, issue, then performance should be high. On the other hand, if grass availability is low and there's not a huge supply of grass, in that case, if you want to maintain the level of performance, you would need to supplement either with conserved forage or with concentrates. It depends on the situation. If it's lower cattle, you might be able to accept a lower level of performance. But on the other hand, if it's finishing animals, it may be you could go in and supplement with concentrates if you're wanting to push them off the farm earlier to leave more grass availability. Likewise, in the sheep farm, if there is limited availability, going out to the creep feeder may be an option to ensure performance is being maintained and not being dropped down if grass availability is going to be an issue. Roger, how has the grazing season gone for you so far? Grazing season this year has went fantastically well. Drought doesn't affect me at all. I've been on a heavier farm, so it's been one of my best years ever, to tell the truth. There's no point in complaining. Uh, it's been really, really good. One of the best springs, been plenty of grass. We got our silage made probably three weeks ago now. We cut on the 12th of May. So it has been really, really good so far for us. Is your grass growth currently matching animal demand? 
Yes, grass growth is matching our demand at the minute. Slightly below it, our grass growth at the minute is 60, and our demand is in the 60s and the mid-60s. So it's doing all we want to do at the minute, and it has been matching demand the whole way through. There was one week we dropped down a wee bit, but no, we've, we haven't had any of the up to 80, 90, 100, which we usually would get at this time of year, which actually for a sheep farmer is quite hard to utilise. So it has stayed very steady for us this year. So it has been quite easy to match demand. We shut off our silage very, very early and got our silage made quite early. And we've all shut off again for a second cut because we are meeting demand. So no things is good. Has this dry spell of weather impacted positively or negatively on grass utilisation? It was really positive for us because we were able to utilise grass really well. With us being on a heavier farm, that would be one of our troubles. We can grow grass and utilisation would be the problem. If it turns wet on some of your wetter paddocks and it just happens to be that's the, the, the time for their rotation, some of that grass is going to get tramped and it is quite hard to get that paddock air out nicely and you might end up having to move them on a day sooner. But we've been able to get all our paddocks down to 1,600 and they're really well air out and the dry weather, the stock is still content and it just means the aftergrass that's coming again is a lot nicer. Stephen, how has the dry spell of weather affected farms in your advisory area? Yes, Jason, to be fair, it's been quite variable. I'd echo just what uh, Roger was saying. As far as I can see, we don't have a drought here yet. Now, it is dry on some farms, but definitely not a drought. And we even had a fair bit of rain last night, which will help a great deal. But even going back to the back end of last year, those guys that closed off in October, November time didn't graze uh, and then put the sheep and lambs out in April time. They have grass and they motored on. Even those silage swords weren't, weren't grazed at all. Them, sw- them silage swords have now been cut off maybe a fortnight, three weeks ago, and they're motoring. On the other hand, the guys that were maybe were away winter and news for other farms or their sheep only, and they grazed the ground in February, March time. Now them guys are struggling because there's no grass to start off with and they're getting tight for grass. Um, now this last week or two, things have improved. But no, th- them guys that had grass over the spring, them have your swords trapped in any moisture there was and kept growth motoring. But on the whole, things are getting better. Lamb went well for most folk. There's a lot of lambs on the ground. Lamb growth rates are actually they're excellent at the moment but probably hear about that from roger later on and the health of lambs and ewes have been good just with the dry spell so all in all it hasn't been that big a struggle one more point on the hill men now the hills are behind this year just with the the lack of soil depth to hold any moisture there was so they're burning up because they're on the on the hills and the rocks so they're struggling at the moment to be honest Moving on from that, Stephen, what measures should those farmers who are struggling be taking at present to overcome the challenges of this dry spell? The, and the dry spell, um, they need to be going out into, into the swords to see what grass you have um, and comparing that to the demand he needs, whether that's through merging the grass by the plate leader or getting help from his carefully advisor to see what the demand and the supply is. Again, I've been hearing people who have paddock systems even go down to the point of giving up on the paddock system because of the dry weather. But I would advise that the paddock system is the only way to manage those grass deficits or the grass surfaces properly. Again, if things are getting really dry and grass growth is starting to drop back substantially, they could try to lengthen the rotation by bringing more paddocks into the system, whether that could be silage ground that maybe earmarked for, for cutting off first cut or second cut silage, bringing that into the rotation, grazing the headlands to give you a few more days extra there. Another point would be, and sometimes we do forget this in the dry weather, make sure all the drinkers are actually working and there's fresh, clean water for them. Even one day is lack of water, the stock will get restless, so make sure that the, the water supply is good. Roger, how are your lambs performing at present? Lambs are doing really well at present. We have the sheep that end at two batches and we're rotationally grazing them. So there's about 250 ewes and their lambs in each batch. One of the batches is doing 370 grams per day and the other batch is doing 360 grams per day. The second batch, there's probably more ewe lambs in that batch and my ewe lambs are rearing their twins. So that's 
probably why they are slightly behind, but that would be good for me. Now, anything over 300 grams, I would be quite happy with. That will probably drop now, probably a, a gradual decline on that from now to weaning, but I would like to think it wouldn't drop below 300. Hopefully after weaning then it would maybe jump up a wee bit, but um, that's where that's where we are at the minute. Looking forward, what will be the next key actions you'll be taking as regards grassland management over the next week or two? Well, we've actually two fields out for reseeding at the minute. We have actually one of them cultivated. It's actually lying and we're going to try the steel seedbed system with it. So it's just sprayed off again and we'll be sowing it hopefully shortly when the rain comes. And we have another field out as well. So we've two fields for reseeding and second cut silage is fairly motoring on there at the minute. It'll be due in a few more weeks time. So that's probably what's on the go at the minute. Stephen, what are your thoughts on spreading fertiliser at the present time? Yeah, it's always a great debate when the dry weather comes, whether to sow fertiliser or not. Some of the guys have maybe sowed 10 days a fortnight ago and they're still seeing the fertiliser on the ground and they're asking the question, have I wasted my time? If it's normal chalk fertiliser, it'll be fine. It'll make but once the moisture comes, it'll go into the, the soil and the plant will take it up. Urea will be different. Now, the urea, you'll probably lose most of it to the atmosphere. But it, it depends on what they're generally sowing per rotation or per month. Some guys are doing it like a bag to the acre. I would advise to cut that bag to about half in the dry spell. Um, the, the plant still needs nitrate to keep it healthy under time of stress the plant, the plant needs nitrate double from going into seed head trying to keep that vegetative state as long as we can the plant still need nitrate for that cut it down to about half francis how would a drop in grass quality impact on silage quality for use uh, as Stephen has already alluded this time of the year the grass plant starts to become re reproductive so we've a lot more stems starting to come up the dry weather will actually push that on even, even harder certainly from mid-may onwards we see the digestibility value drop by about five units per week. That will obviously have a knock-on effect on silage quality for feeding to the sheep over, over the winter time. So anyone that hasn't cut at this stage, depending on for, for use, particularly twin burn use, you want to get as high quality silage in there as possible. If you know you're you're, you're cutting grass, that there's a lot of seed head in, a lot of fibre material in, well, that's going to have a negative effect on on the quality of the forage. It's really going to mean that if you're a lot of that seed head and a lot of fibre in it, well, first thing first, you're going to have to get your sardines analysed once you do make the sardines. Analyse your sardines pre pre feeding the sheep and actually work out how much concentrates. But certainly, if you haven't first got ready made, you're probably looking at having to supplement with more concentrates to meet the nutrition requirements of the ewe pre -naman. Roger, given the current price volatility and uncertainty, many farmers will be looking to get more out of grass this year. What practical recommendations would you give farmers to help them get most from grass? Well, I think we just need to be careful and utilise the grass from now on. So if we do get a wee bit of spell of weather now and there is a wee another burst of grass growth that we utilise that really well, close off any spare paddocks that's getting ahead, get them peeled off, get the reserves built up for the winter time. But also with just with cutting them paddocks off and getting them bealed, utilising that after grass really well. We'll have to now start thinking about weaning our lambs and getting high quality grass for them weaned lambs to keep them motoring on. So that's really what we need to be concentrating on now. Don't get complacent if grass growth does come now and just try and stay utilising it really well and make use of that grass when it does grow. That's it for this episode of the Grass Check podcast. And my thanks to Kat Hewson and Francis Lively from Athby, Stephen Flanagan from Caffrey, and Roger Bell for joining us. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. You can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts, as well as Spotify. For more information, you can go to the Grass Check website, www.agresearch.org slash grasscheck and the Grass Check social media channels. I'm Jason Reichen, and join us the next time for the Grass Check podcast. Until then, stay safe.